Dr. Tristan Smith, welcome. You're an associate professor at UCL Energy Institute and you're a leading expert in low carbon shipping. Now, the shipping industry is a huge emitter of carbon. It's a huge task for them to take on this challenge. How are they doing? Progress is improving. <laughs> it's been very difficult. We've been working in this field for over a decade and for much of that period, not much progress was made. The, the regulation and the policy space wasn't dealing with the subject of how we decarbonise shipping. And as a result, it was very hard as, an, as a company in the se sector to be making investment decisions aligned to decarbonisation. So technology is seen as the answer. What exciting technologies are out there? One of the most exciting technologies, in our opinion, is, is wind assistance, which would be putting sails back on ships, putting Flettner rotors on them and kites. And this is exciting because it's a way to reimagine the technologies that we've had in the past, but in a much more modern context and finding ways to use the cleanest source of energy most directly and efficiently on vessels. Of course, we can use renewable electricity to synthesize fuels, but that is a more complicated process with many more losses than if we use wind power direct. So the the fuel that we will need to use is a hydrogen derived fuel and that's produced using electrolyzer just splitting water into its hydrogen atoms and then combining that perhaps with nitrogen to make ammonia which is a, then a much easier version of hydrogen to store on board the ship and to store on land and to handle on board the vessel. Ship operators and ship owners, what do they have to do right now to change? The most important step is really to explore business models because we are in a situation where there are two fundamental risks that every operator faces. One is technological uncertainty and the other is policy uncertainty. What we know is that those two things will clarify at some point in the next uh, decade and probably the next five years. As they clarify, those with the wrong business model will find some very significant risks of stranded assets. And how can they drive the decarbonisation agenda? As soon as companies have done a small amount of strategizing on that risk and opportunity space, they rapidly see that the technology uncertainty is something that will happen, it's happening, but the policy uncertainty is a major risk that they carry and that um, encouraging policymakers to become clear as quickly as possible and uh, with the appropriate level of stringency that will actually drive a transition and not just give a political signal that something might happen one day. I think that becomes something that they realise is so important that Many companies start to then become vocal advocates for policy, which is, which is an interesting development in a sector which normally prefers a low regulatory environment. The shipping industry is so big, so fossil fuel heavy. Are you hopeful for the future? Technologically, it's actually incredibly straightforward. Um, the solution that we look at most of the time, ammonia as an alternative fuel, is something that we ran buses on in World War II. So the concept that in 2020 and 2030 we couldn't run ships on that fuel is absurd. It's, it's straightforward technologically. Um, what it does require is a whole system global change, and that's exactly where shipping has a major advantage compared to many other industries, because it has a global regulator, the IMO, which can set rules which are standard regardless of where a ship operates in the world. So it has two of the key obvious um, advantages, an easy technological solution and a global framework for managing the transition to that new technology. The other reason why shipping is actually a relatively straightforward sector to decarbonise is that the number of vehicles are quite few. So instead of having millions of cars around the world, there are about 50,000 ships which are transporting global trade, and each of them has a very large engine and a very large fuel tank. So we are not talking about a large number of vehicles or a large number of engines or tanks that need to be replaced. And that's another advantage for shipping's decarbonisation. And are you personally hopeful for the future? I'm very hopeful. Uh, it's, not, it's not difficult. There are a lot of advantages that will come which are not just about decarbonising ships but reducing noise, reducing air pollution emissions and um, scaling and enabling many countries to have a green transition. And that's a key opportunity that lots of countries will need anyway. They want the hydrogen market to appear and shipping is the obvious hydrogen market. Society has solved much bigger problems than a conversion of an energy supply chain from one commodity to another, which is primarily what we're talking about here. You know, getting people to land on the moon, getting people to launch extraordinary technologies in um, sectors around the world is something that we've got lots of experience in. What we need is the, is the government commitment to drive it at the speed it needs to happen, and then investment and capital will fall into place. 
Dr. Tristan Smith, thank you very much.